All right, so hello everyone. Here we go again. So we are <coughs> again going to discuss another lesson in biology. So this time we will going to discuss the important organs in your nervous system, mainly the central nervous system. So also known as the central processing zone of the nervous system. All right, so in this topic we will going to discuss the location and the basic function of your central nervous system. Alright, so we'll not waste time anymore and we will go into start. Okay, so the central nervous system or the nervous system is made up of brain, spinal cord, and nerves. So as you can see on this picture, so the spinal cord is uh, at the middle or this uh, this is the bridge between the brain and then the, the nerves that is scattered around your body. Alright, so the nerves will be a topic for another day but we will going to discuss here in this session in this uh, video the central nervous system so mainly the brain and the function of your spinal cord okay so let's start now as we all know our brain is similar to your uh, computer processing unit all right or the central processing unit of the computer because in if we go back to the first lesson that we had so the function of your nervous system is the sensory input integration and sensory output so all the all the basic function of our body is uh, integrated in the brain so the brain decides what to do on uh, something that you have encountered for example you encountered a, uh, a fire so the brain will interpret that one and we will he uh, the brain will try to integrate some uh, options in order for you to cope with that particular situation so the brain will think of certain ways to how to put off your or put off the fire yeah Okay, so technically our brain is similar to the central processing unit of the computer. If the central processing unit of the computer is missing, then the computer will not do its uh, basic function. Alright, so now in the central nervous system, uh, we have right here the, the, the site where the sensory information are integrated. Right, so integrated to what? Integrated to create a motor uh, effect, yeah, or a motor output. So whatever you see, whatever you smell, whatever you touch, whatever you hear, whatever you taste, they are all uh, integrated in your central nervous system. Okay, then. Another function of the central nervous system is to coordinate both conscious and unconscious activity, mainly the voluntary and the involuntary activities like respiration, digestion, and sleeping. And, okay, so those are uh, right. Those are some activities which is voluntary and involuntary. Next one is the the components of your central nervous system. Your central nervous system is made up of uh, brain and the spinal cord. All right, so please take note that one. Okay, so the brain and then the spinal cord. Now, let's take a look first, the one at the bottom, so which is the spinal cord. So this is the part of the central nervous system that conducts two-way signal between the body and your brain. All right, so whatever, all right, whatever um, information that is uh, obtained by the nerves on all throughout your body, it is sent out. It is sent out on your uh, spinal cord, and then it goes to the brain. Then it goes back again to the spinal cord and goes back to, or it goes to an organ that will take an effect after that sensory input all right so that's uh, that's how your spinal cord works all right so this is a bridgeway between brain and the nerves in your body okay so this, this is just your spinal cord so since your spinal cord is made up of a soft nervous tissue yeah so this is a uh, the spinal cord is made up of soft nervous tissue so your your spinal cord is protected by a sort of a vertebrate yeah? so it is made up of uh, it is protected by a backbone yeah? so so that it will not uh, incur some uh, injuries because it must be protected due to the idea that it is made up of a soft tissue so as you can see here it is made up of uh, 
it is protected by the, uh, the backbone, yeah, or the vertebra, yeah. Next one. Okay, so in the spinal cord, and in the spinal cord, what, what it does is it receives sensory information from the skin and muscles and integrates simple response to a certain kind of uh, certain kind of stimuli. But yeah, all right. So, <clears throat> so meaning to say that the, all the sensory information, uh, especially on the lower extremities of the body, is uh, gathered by the skin and then the mass uh, skin and it in, it is integrated to the brain and once it, once that particular information is integrated on the brain the brain will create an information that will travel to the effectors like the uh, one that we have right here which, which is called the muscles there we go so the muscles will move because of the information sent to it by the brain Right, so the motion of the muscle will not be in random, but the motion of it will be in response to the stimuli that is uh, obtained by your sensory organs. Right, so that is the spinal cord. Okay, next one. This is the no, microscopic view of the. This is the, the microscopic view of the spinal cord. So what do we have right here? So we have uh, we have the the gray matter, okay, and we have the white matter. All right. So as you can see at the middle of the spinal cord, there is what they call the central canal. Okay. So. <coughs> In terms of different neurons, in terms of the types of neuron, the spinal cord is made up of interneurons, uh, a group of interneurons. Okay, so these interneurons are arranged accordingly. So when we talk about gray matter, when we talk about gray matter, these are made up of um, these are made up of the neurons cell body, cell body. Yeah. All right. So when we talk about white matter, so the white matter is uh, the part of the neuron which is all about the axon. Okay. So gray matter, cell body, and white matter is the axon. Why? Why the cell body is the gray matter? Because if you take a look at the cell body, there is what they call the nucleus, and the nucleus is the one that gives gray coloration to this one that is uh maybe that is one of the reason why it is called the gray matter so this particular part that we have right here this one is made up of or this one that we have right here this is made up of cell body cell body of your neurons meanwhile the white matter so the reason why it is white matter because probably the color of the myelin sheet is white Alright, so the color of the fatty substance that covers your neuron is white. So, where can we find that one? We, all, we can only find that one in the axon. Okay, so this is the dorsal view and then the ventral view. The one that is facing your uh, ribs is this one. The one that is facing uh, the back part of your body, this one, the back part. Alright, so that is the microscopic view of your uh, spinal cord. Okay, next one. Yeah. So as you can see, or as we as I discussed earlier, so it's made up of gray matter, the white matter, then the central uh, the central canal which secretes the cerebrospinal fluid. Now aside from uh, the backbone, your spinal cord is covered with or it is uh, covered with uh, cerebrospinal fluid so that uh, it will not uh, be uh, it will not uh, be affected by any physical impact. All right, that will damage your uh, spinal cord. Yeah, so it will be protected to a certain point that it will uh, okay, it will absorb certain number of force prior to get to the soft tissues of your spinal cord. All right, so that's the structure of your spinal cord. All right, next one is the other view of the spinal cord when it is enclosed in your uh, this one is what they call your. Uh, vertebra yeah. or the uh, the one that is noticeable to vertebrates yeah so yeah 
Okay, so we have uh, right here the spinal cord, the one at the middle. So as you can see, this uh, this omnibus space that we have right here, yeah. So this space that we have right here is it is filled up with uh, cerebrospinal fluid, which protects the spinal cord from. Um, from uh, any force yeah, that will uh, damage the spinal cord itself. Alright, so uh, as you can see, there are a lot of uh, nerves and or nerve ending that is connected to your spinal cord because the spinal cord is the one uh, which is attached to your autonomic and then the, uh, the autonomic system and then the somatic nervous system okay so that is the picture all right next one uh, if you take a look at other diagrams so this is how it works so the interneuron in your spinal cord is connected or connecting the sensory neuron the one that we have right here and the next one so the interneuron is also connected to the interneuron is also connected to what they call your motor neuron. So, technically, these three neurons are working hand in hand together in order to relay the messages from the, uh, from the sensory input. Yeah. Okay, then it will deliver its, uh, its output to a certain muscle or certain effector, whatever effector it is. Alright, so that is your uh, spinal cord. Now, what is the what, what what are the cool things about spinal uh, spinal uh, no, cord? So the spinal nerves are the one that is connected to the spinal cord. It carries the signal uh, back and forth to the spinal cord. So these spinal nerves connects uh, the spinal cord to different organs like liver, like uh, stomach, like uh, esophagus, so on and so forth. Yeah. So it performs the the autonomic or the involuntary motion or a voluntary motion it is sorry now uh, the spinal cord contains uh, central pattern generators so these generators are made up of neurons they are capable of doing uh, doing complex action or muscle activation without any input of the brain so in short the spinal cord can do what they call reflex yeah. So the reflex action is a kind of action that doesn't require the brain uh, to do the integration. The spinal cord will do its uh, the spinal cord will act or will do its function just to make sure that the organism will avoid something like it, for example pain. Alright, so that's the reason why there are some chickens even though they are decapitated, so the chicken still uh, move for several days or even months. Yeah. So even without the head part or the brain. So even with its spinal cord attached, so that the, the that organism can still uh, move. All right, so that's the central pattern generator. All right, next one. And as I said earlier, so the spinal cord is connected to different organs of your body. Okay, so here we go. Alright, so that's enough for the spinal cord. Now we go now to the one that integrates everything, which is called the brain. Alright, so one function of the brain here is the homeostatic center that keeps the body smoothly functioning. So what does it mean? So it means that with what we call homeostasis, it means that the everything, the both chemical and uh, both chemical and uh, the status of your body must be in the state of equilibrium all right so homeostasis now if anything that is uh, there is an imbalance in your uh, body the brain will act as the one that will balance everything so it will correct everything and then we the brain will try to balance everything like uh, for example I will give you one example all right so when the temperature goes up so the brain will detect that temperature influx so what your body will do is it will produce sweat so that your body will cool down okay so and aside from sweat the blood vessel will go near the skin so that it can release heat all right so when it is called uh when it is called the man 
the body will uh, likely to shiver so that it will conserve heat from the inside. So, all those actions are done by the brain in order to properly correct anything that is imbalanced. Alright, so next one. The brain is the sensory centers that integrates data from the sense organ. So, as you can see, all sense organ are connected to the brain. So, there's no, I don't think there's not no, no sense or there's one sense organ that is not connected to the brain. Alright, so that is your brain. The sensory center that integrates data from the sense organ. So, yeah. Next one. The, same is, uh, the brain is the center for emotion and intellect. So that's the reason why your brain is made up of several lobes. The gyri or the fissure that is found in your brain. Yeah, the gyri and the sulci. So... Right, so guy, alright, guy, guy, and then the so guy. Alright, so these are the the fissures found in your brain. So this particular uh, this particular lobes has its uh, certain function for emotion, judgment, talking, singing, yan. So hearing, vision, and other stuffs. These are the these are the work of the lobes of your brain, right? So any emotion, emotional or intellectual function of our uh, body, it is goes or it goes down to the function of the lobes of your brain. All right, so that is the one function of it. Next one. So the brain is the motor movement center of the body. So uh, our daily movement is controlled by the brain. So. Meaning to say, the, the motion that we create every day, it is integrated on the brain. So, the brain creates that motion and it is cascaded to certain effectors. Remember that the brain, the, the brain do the integration part of your function of the nervous system. Alright, so the brain is the motor movement center of the body. Alright, next one. Now, also the brain is made up of nervous tissues which are soft, soft enough and when they are damaged, it is not, uh, or not uh, we can say that it is irreplaceable. So, in order, to, uh, in order to compensate on that, so the brain is made up of several, uh, in order to protect the brain, the brain or the skull is made up of several layers that uh, covers the brain and again, there is what they call cerebrospinal fluid that uh, uh, lessens the force of whatever uh, impact that will occur on the brain. Yan. So, it's protected by layers of skull. Yan. Take note that the skull is the one that protects the brain. And because of its uh, soft nature, so that's how it is. Alright, so that's the skull. Okay. Next one, the structure of the brain is uh, it's similar with your uh, spinal cord. It's made up of gray and white matter. So as we discussed earlier, that the gray matter is made up of uh, cell body. Then the white matter is made up of the axon part of the neuron. All right, so uh, the brain also, if the spinal cord has spinal nerves, the brain also has cranial nerves. So it carries signal back and forth to the brain. So it do also the, the, the this, this cranial nerve that we have right here does also the reflex action, the same uh, thing that your uh, spinal cord do. Uh, one example of the reflex action controlled by the brain is uh, when you sneeze. If there's something goes inside your nose, any foreign object which is uh, which is an allergen or something like that, it will trigger the it will trigger these cranial nerves to do uh, what they call reflex. So there are some movements, uh, there are some movement that doesn't require so much integration of the brain. So that is why it is done immediately. Alright, so this is done immediately. Okay, so this is your brain. This is the gray and or the white matter. So as you can see, if you will compare the brain and then the spinal cord, the gray matter is outside the brain and the white matter is inside the brain. Alright, so the insides or the internal part of the brain is made up of axons and the gray matter which is made, makes up the outside or the outer portion of the brain is made up of uh, cell bodies, bunch of cell bodies. Okay.
So this is the brain in Nana. So as you can see here, you see the you see the guy right. So this is the guy right. Yeah. So as you can see, this fissure, this fissure that you have right here, this is the guy right. All right. So the one, this this mountains that you have right here, a mountain-like structure. Yeah. So this is your sulci. Okay. So that's how you, uh, that is the brain. Okay. As you can see here, it is connected to an optic nerve. This the optic nerve is, is still intact. So, therefore, if this is the optic nerve, this is the eye. Okay. So next one. All right. So there are uh, there are so many you know, so many um, there are so many process in order for your uh, brain to develop its. Uh, function all right so your brain uh, your brain started on a neural tube yeah. so on a neural tube uh, there the, the, the neural tube is divided into several parts which will become your cerebrum which will become your uh, midbrain which will become your cerebellum and then so on so forth all right so upon developing that one so upon developing that one you will see how complicated our brain is because if you will compare its development to other organisms like birds fish reptiles and so on and so forth uh, their brain is not like uh, not that complicated the way we have our brain structure all right so it means that it means that in terms of evolution if you take a look at the brain of those organisms the fish the reptile the the birds and including us you can see a pattern in which uh, it is like the brain development so meaning to say it the brain our brain started from a more simple one and as it develops in our or as we develop our body develops it is more and more developed as well of its complex function all right so that is one of the brain development that we have right here so next one all right so the brain is made up of several uh, regions Okay, so what are these regions? So as you can see here, one of those is the one of those is the hindbrain, one of those is the midbrain, one of those is the yum, yum, the, the cerebrum that we that's the cerebrum that we have right here. Yeah. Alright, so we will try to find out what are their purpose or what are what are their function. Alright, so one of those is the one of those, we will start now with the regions of the brain, which is called the cerebru cerebellum. Yeah, yes, uh, uh, correct me, uh, uh, pardon me for my, for my pronunciation. Cerebellum. Yeah, cerebellum do the balance and coordination. So the reason why we can walk up, right, it's because of this part of the brain. Now, where can we find this? All right, so the cerebru cerebr cerebellum is found at the back part of your brain stem. And it is in the lower part, all right. So it is, uh, it is in the lower part of your uh, cerebrum, all right. So that is the cerebellum. Okay. So next one, we have the brain stem. So the brain stem, this one, is made up of midbrain, all right. It's made up of midbrain, which controls the motor, the sleep and wake cycle, the temperature regulation, the reflex, all right. So that is the midbrain. Next one, in the brainstem, there is also what they call pons. So most, mostly, it controls all the involuntary processes in our body. For example, uh, breathing, right? So digestion. Not, uh, not only pons, also with the medulla oblongata, this particular part does the involuntary processes your brain, uh, your body does. All right. So again, one of those is heartbeat. One of those is breathing. One of those is digestion. All right. So urination, so on and so forth. All right. So those uh, that is the function of your brain stem. Right. So as you can see here, so let's locate the let's locate our cerebellum. So this is the cerebellum. So this one. All right. So as you can see, it looks like this one. Now, uh, let's locate the pons. So the pons is here. Okay. And the medulla oblongata is uh, here. Now, the midbrain is this one. The whole thing that we have right here, this one. All right. So if we connect these three together, one, 
2 and 3. Now, if we connect these three together, so this is the, or that part is your midbrain. So, that is the midbrain. Alright, so, or the brainstem rather, sorry for that, the brainstem. Okay, so, okay, that is the brainstem. Next one. We have now the diencephalon. Alright, so the diencephalon is the one that uh, that is located on the brain that is uh, for consciousness, sleep-wake cycle, memory, homeostasis, emotions, yeah. Alright, so the one that controls consciousness and alertness in the diencephalon is the thalamus. Alright, so the thalamus part. Then the epithalamus is the one that controls the sleep and wake cycle and also the motor uh, response of our body. So... Yeah, that's the epithalamus. Next one, the mammillary body, it, uh, it is for the memory. So, probably our, uh, the things that we experience every day, the things that we have learned in, uh, in school, it is stored in this particular part of the brain called the mammillary body or the memory or it controls the memory part. Next one, so the hypothalamus, so in our next lesson which is the endocrine system, it works hand in hand with that organ system in order to maintain homeostasis. Alright, so it is, uh, it also governs other, other functions like reproduction, and uh, egg cell production, sperm cell production. Alright, so mainly the homeostasis. Alright, next one, the limbic system. This is the the one that is uh, the one that is found in the diencephalon, which controls the memory and also the emotions. Alright, so this four or this four uh, five parts that we have right here, these are the parts of your diencephalon. So let's take a look. So the diencephalon is somewhere here. Yeah. That is the diencephalon. So this is your midbrain and the one below is your uh, brain stem. So this one is the brain stem. Alright, so as you can see the diencephalon is very, 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 very small. Right, so that is a small part. So somewhere here is your hypothalamus. Yeah. So yeah, so we cannot uh, we cannot find other stuffs right here. So let's take a look. So if we go, uh, if we enlarge that particular part, so in the in the diencephalon, this is your thalamus and this is your hypothalamus. All right. So technically, that's the uh, that this is the area. Uh, this is the area uh, for the diencephalon that we can find the diencephalon. All right. So next one. So this is the limbic system. So right. So this is the limbic system. So it is also known as the reptilian brain. It controls. Uh, it controls uh, the basic. Uh, so our less philosophical ancestor, the reptiles, uh, they use this particular system for eating, having sex, uh, staying safe. Yeah. What? Those are some examples of the function of this uh, limbic system. All right. So eat. Uh, yeah. I mean, um, uh, being ano, uh, be able to stay safe yan. so that is controlled by the limbic system and the limbic system has several parts so we have here the hippocampus and so this is where the memory is stored somehow and then we have the amygdala and uh, it controls all the emotion fear uh, anxiety all right so sadness so on and so forth all right so the mood system or the mood uh, of a person is also controlled by this system all right so that is the limbic system all right next one the cerebrum the cerebrum is the largest part of your brain and then it's divided into hemisphere and the hemisphere are further divided into lobes all right so yeah all right so we have the groups which is the sulci and the gyri are the ridges so the one at the middle Right, so the one at the middle. So if you look at the middle of this uh, image, so the one at the middle here, this one, this is the gyri, and this one, this one, is the sulci. So the groups. All right. So now what? The hemisphere is divided into left and right, and they are connected by corpus callosum. Right. So. So the left and right hemisphere is uh, connected by corpus callosum. Alright, so the purpose of that 
is to send information back and forth to the brain. Now, there's one cool function or there's one important function of the brain. The brain uh, neurons may or may not interact with each other. All right, they don't. Uh, they uh, they are not. Uh, they are not needed to interact with with one another. They can still perform their, their function even one lobe is uh, is necessary for that particular situation. So, meaning to say, every function of your brain may or may not include all the lobes of it. Right, so let's take a look at the cerebrum. So there are several parts of your cerebrum. We have different lobes. So these lobes are dedicated to certain function. So we have the prefrontal lobe that we have right here. Uh, more of the emotion is, is uh, more of the emotion. The judgment is on this part. The sensory motor area. So the the perception of pain is uh, is integrated here. So the parietal lobe. All right. So the parietal lobe. Then we have the visual. All right. So the visual uh, integration is done in this part of the lobe. Then we have the auditory lobe. All right. So we have the right. So we have the yeah. So, technically, your brain is made up of several lobes. So, we will talk about that one. Alright, we will talk about each and every function of it, uh, function of the lobe when we go to the discussion of brain. Alright, so next one. Alright, so these are the uh, internal parts of the brain. So, as summarized, so we have uh, the cerebrum. Alright, so the diencephalon is located here. Then we have the midbrain, the pons, the medulla, which con uh, which comprises your uh, which comprises your brainstem, and finally we will not forget the cerebru cerebellum. All right, so this one. Now the two hemispheres of the brain is connected via corpus callosum, the one that we have right here. All right, so there we go. That's the human brain. Okay. So, to end up our uh, video lesson today, what have we learned? We have learned that the central nervous system is made up of brain and spinal cord. And the function of the central nervous system is to integrate the sensory and create motor out output. Alright, so we also found out the basic uh, function or basic structure of your uh, spinal cord. So the spinal cord is made up of gray and white matter. Alright, so so as the brain. So they have uh, they are different in some ways. And also the brain is made up of several parts. We have the brain stem, the diencephalon, the cerebrum, then the cerebellum. Alright, so with that. I hope you did learn something on this video. If you do have any question, don't forget to write it down or message me personally. Alright, so that's it for the central nervous system. Good luck and don't forget to smile. Alright.